everybody. I want to spend some time today talking about a data modeling concept called junk dimensions. And from the name, you might think it's a technique that's derogatory and something you want to avoid, but it's actually a really useful approach. And I worked on a forum question today on the Enterprise DNA Support Forum that junk dimensions was a perfect solution for. And I wanted to walk you through the the concept of it and also the application. Um, just because I think once you you see it and understand it, you'll find a lot of application for it in your own work. So what are junk dimensions? Um, and if we look to Kimball and Ross Data Warehouse Toolkit, which is kind of the one of the Bibles of dimensional modeling, um, Kimball defines it as the grouping of typically low cardinality flags and indicators. And what that means is, we talk about low cardinality, means a small number of unique observations within a given field. So if we look here, I've got an example that, let's say we've got a, a data model and we build custom PCs and the data model is with regard to orders and invoices. And we've got a number of these flags here um, that we wanna capture in terms of what type of processor is in each PC, um, what type of tower configuration for the case we're using, compact or full, and whether it's a gaming computer or a workstation. And if you look in each of these fields, there's only two unique, two unique observations in each field. Um, and that is, that is what we, Kimball would refer to as a low cardinality flag. And so he says, by creating an abstract dimension, we remove flags from the fact table while placing them in a useful dimensional framework. And the analogy here, I think, is a good one. It's it's the kitchen junk drawer. Um, you know, everybody's got a drawer that's full of rubber bands and staples and batteries and birthday candles and paper clips, et cetera. And it it's not sufficiently important for any of these things to warrant their own drawer, but you've got to have a place to put them. Um, and keeping them in the fact table can cause that fact table to balloon out in size. So if we think about this, let's say we had a fact table that was a million records. You know, let's say this business is really successful. We're building a lot of computers and we've got for each, each computer that we, that we, we sell, we've got a, flag what processor, what tower, and what purpose. And so if we have a million a million rows of PCs that have been ordered, that's now three million flags that we've got in that fact table. But instead what we could do is we could move these to a dimension table and link only on the model ID. And that that removes those three million those 3 million flags from the fact table. Now, what we could do is we could make a separate table for each of these, each of these flags. And that would work, but it's unnecessary in terms of complicating the data model that you typically want to avoid single, single column tables. Um, and so the ideal solution here is to combine them into one, what's called junk dimension. Um, where you've got a bunch of these low cardinality flags, maybe related in some you know general way. These are all related to attributes of the computers that we're building, but not in a in a really direct way that you would normally have for a a specific dimension table. So let's take a look at the specific application here. And this was on the forum today and basically what the what the member wanted to do was to um create two different two different fields one for stalled versus active so if the client had made a transaction in the last 45 days it gets flagged as active otherwise it gets flagged as stalled and then also a a client type which is either multi order or single order um, so if the if the account had two or more transactions at any point through history in a single account number, that would be considered a multi-order client. 
And if they only had one order for a given account number, um, that would be a, a single order client. So those are the two the two flags we want to develop. And so let's jump into Power BI and figure out how to do that. Okay, so we're here in Power BI and let's take a look at the data model. And it's a really, really simple data model. We've just got a dates table. This is our extended date table. And we've got a transactions table. And the transactions table only has three fields, an account number, invoice date, and sales quantity. And so what we can do is go into Power Query. And this is generally if we can push the the calculation closer to the source, the transformation closer to the source, um, we want to do that. And so this is not dynamic within the course of a, of a reporting session. So we really don't need to do it in DAX. We should be doing it either in Power Query or pushing it even further to the source and doing it in the data warehouse in SQL if we have that option. But for now, let's assume we don't and that we're just doing it in Power Query. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, figure out the client type, whether it's a single order or a multi-order transaction. And so what we can do here is go to group by count count rows. So that'll be good. That's That'll figure out whether we've got a, a single order or multi-order by account number. And then... What we want to do here is add all data and make that an all rows operation so that we return not the aggregated table, but we return the initial table with that row count in each row. So let's let's take a look at that. Here we've got our count. Um, this is a count of one, so this is going to be a single order client. Here we've got a count of 10, so that's multi-order, whole bunch of multi-order clients, and then a number of single-order clients. So this is going to work really well. So let's let's expand this out. Um, we've already got a count number, so we take that off. And that's that's in good shape. So what we can do now is we can add a custom column. and say, let's call this um, client type. And this is going to be an if statement, if count is equal to one, then it's going to be single order. else multi-order. And we'll just change that to a text type. And we've got one of our one of our two dimensions set in the fact table. Now we're going to want to move that, but let's before we do that, let's get the second one. So the next one we want to do is a little bit more complicated in terms of we want to look at whether the order, the, the most recent order is 45 days or less from today's date. And if that's the case, then the client is viewed as active. If there's no order within 45 days of today, then the client is inactive. So let's, let's add a custom column. And let's make that column today. And if we go here to local uh, date time dot local now, and that's going to give us the, the current date and time. And if we just say here date dot from That'll just give us only the, the date portion of that date, time, local, now. And that's exactly what it does. So let's just change that to a date type. 
and we're good there. So then what we want to do is let's move that over here. And there's a simple, a simple way to create a subtraction between two dates, which is you just highlight, highlight those two dates and then say date subtract days. And that'll give you, that'll give you the difference between those, those two dates in, num in terms of number of days. So let's name this um, days prior to today. And now what we want to do is let's go back and we want to find the minimum days prior to today. Um, so the most recent order and for each account number. And if that, if that number is less than or equal to 45, then we want to call that active. So we want to do another group by, and we go to advanced and we go account number. And again, we're going to use that all data, all rows. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to add the, the min between, min days between. And this is just going to be the minimum of days prior to today. And that's going to give us the most recent, the most recent order. And then we expand the all data, take out account number, and expand that out. And now we've got the minimum days between for each of the each of the account numbers. So now all we need to do is just one more step, which is we want to add another column, similar custom column. And this is going to be um, client timing. And it's going to be if our min days between is less than or equal to 45, then active else stalled. No errors, and that's looking good. And now what we can do is we can, we can take and go to choose columns. And we can, we can take out the ones that we don't need now. That There are a lot of supporting columns. So count today, uh, days prior to today, minimum days in between. So now what we've got is just the original fact table plus the client type and client timing. And now what we can do, since we don't want to keep these in, in, the, um, in the fact table, Let's duplicate this table. And we'll call this account flags. And let's go back to the transactions table and let's take out these two fields. Okay, so we now have the original, the original fact table, and now we've got this accounts flag table. And what we can do is we don't need these two fields, so we take these out. And now what we do is we just take, highlight all these fields, remove rows, and remove duplicates. 
and now we've got we've got our um, our junk dimension table. So what we can do is we can go close and apply. Wait for that to chug through. And what we can do now is connect account number on our account flags to account number in transaction. And we've got a one to many, and we've got all the, the attributes that we wanted up in our junk dimension. So the transactions table is the fact table is exactly as it was. And then we've got this new junk dimension table. And so now what we can do is exactly what the member wanted to do initially, which is to slice based on these attributes, client timing, And let's change that to a slicer. And in this case, it's only showing stalled because there are no, there are no active client records that everything is, is greater than uh, 45 days in this particular data set. And then if we go client type, we can do the same thing here and turn that into a slicer. Shrink that down. And we can see now that if we, like if we've got the, the data here, if we go multi-order, it'll leave us only with those that have multiple orders. And if we go single order, it'll be only the ones that have one, um, one purchase. So that is, that is basically what a junk dimension is and how you create it. Um, as I say, it's a very useful technique um, in this particular situation where you've got a bunch of assorted low cardinality flags that you want to incorporate in your data model in an efficient way. And um, that group by uh, all rows technique is one that is extremely useful in a lot of different ways. And one way is for creating these these sorts of junk dimensions. So I hope you found that helpful. And um, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like, it really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.